Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. I hope you are having a lovely weekend and that everything is going well in your world. Uh, week three is a very interesting week. Um, lots more information about the brain uh, that I think that you'll find interesting. And I just want to go over just briefly the articles really quickly. So you're looking at language in the brain. And I think what you're going to find really interesting about language in the brain is how adaptable a brain is and that the neuroplasticity of the brain is pretty fascinating. Um, so make sure that uh, you watch the entire clip and, um, you know, listen when they talk about dysphagia and stroke and those types of things and the cool things that your brain can do to adapt um, because it works in parts uh, as you move through um, traumatic experiences, physical traumatic experiences. So I think that you'll really, really like that. Um, you also are going to be looking at um, neuroscience basics. You're going to be looking at a mental model of the learner, mind, brain, and education. <clears throat> this is all science related with the brain. And then you're going to be reading an article called Putting Neuroscience in the Classroom. It's actually about a school that's involved in brain study. It's really interesting. Ki kind of a uh, uh, very uh, sci-fi, <laughs> especially for people of my, of my age. Um, but it's but it's very, very interesting about how they're studying students' brains and education. And um, I want you to also um, consider that one of the things that we're working to improve in the educational field is educational psychology when teachers are learning to become teachers. And we all see this. This, this doesn't matter about age. It matters about how long you've been out of college and how long you've been just kind of focused in your own world, whether that's elementary or middle school or high school. But, um, you know, a lot of times in teaching programs, educational psychology is a six-month course and then you're done. Um, but brain research is constantly changing. And so one of the things that we want to consider is how can we make teacher education something that we look at educational psychology and the psychology of children again and again and again, and not repetitively learning the same thing. You know, we've all been in PDs where we've learned the same thing in a PD again and again and again, but more about how do we make sure that teachers, you know, every five years in education or every three years in education, whatever, that we are, you know, studying the new science and the changes of everything that we're learning about brains and um, psychology. And I think that we can all agree, and we've talked about it already in previous lessons, that knowing, knowing a child's emotions, motivations, those type of things, looking at the psychology of a child um, helps you to be a better teacher. Um, it helps you to better serve that child. And um, so, you know, psychology and looking at it related to academics and student academics, you know, is, is uh, very important. And unfortunately, just having one class, you know, in your first year of uh, becoming a teacher and then never looking at it again, um, puts you at a disadvantage, you know, as you move through to your career. So that's something that, you know, we're beginning to look at is how, how can we, how can we address this? And, um, you know, on a side note, uh, not related to, uh, you know, psychology specifically, but we're already seeing this problem also with digital technology. And, um, I think I said at the beginning of this course, uh, that, but if I did not, here it is now, we're educating students for jobs that don't currently exist. And that's strange and interesting, okay? But we have no idea what jobs are going to be available three years, five years from now related to technology. And, and then tied into technology in the brain, and we've already talked about this, we're already seeing changes in students' brains and their psychological makeup based on the way they're using digital technology and social media and those types of things. So it's really, really fascinating. Um, and the more aware you are and the more you choose to stay up to date, the better it is for you as educators. And um, so, you know, keep being current with your reading. And that's why I always put up non-required reading um, uh, 
to, to make sure you know that you you have access to look at um, interesting things that are going on right now. Okay, um, I want to go down to tasks and procedures really quick because Allison actually had a question about this and it took me a minute to figure out what was going on, but um, uh, she was specifically asking about the graphic organizer and examples and thank you Allison for bringing that up. So this is connected to your week eight work. So if you look at this and you say, and you see at the very end, it says due Friday of week eight, um, then you just go ahead and you click on week eight and go to the directions for, and I can, I can put that link in week three, but I don't like to overwhelm people with too much work at once. So you go to week eight and where it says submit assignment number four, week eight brain compatible unit. You click on those directions. You could just take a preview of what you're, you know, going to be doing for week eight because it is building up over the weeks of our course. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of my directions, you're going to see that there are two student samples there that will help you with your brain-based task uh, this week. Okay, so um, look over the task, look at what you're supposed to do, and then look at what it looks like within the sample documents, okay? You've got your discussion board prompts this week, prompt one, prompt two, and prompt three. You can look those over on your own. I don't wanna waste time in this video. Uh, and then I've put some look aheads. Uh, once again, you're gonna see that brain compatible unit and arts and movement project. And then remember that your second part of your group integration project is due tonight on or before 11.59 p.m and you're going to submit the slide presentation for grading and remember that you're also going to submit it to the discussion board. So one person in the group submits the assignment as the group work to the submit assignment section and then you also need to submit it to the discussion board so that your peers can um, look it over. Okay and uh, that's about it this week. I don't want to talk too long because I really really gave you a good one last week. Uh, but I will tell you all my ducks flew away, so they're gone for the year. The last one flew out on the 7th, and uh, it's always sad, but always wonderful to know that the wild beans are off in the world. And um, I hope that you uh, have a wonderful week, and feel free to contact me as needed, and I will talk to you again soon. Look forward to seeing your work. Take care. Bye-bye.